1970, it wasn't just about big horsepower, it was who could have the loudest car. Now, Chevrolet came out with the Hugger colors, the Hugger oranges, the Daytona yellows. They were loud and obnoxious. They had big black stripes, big wheels, and of course, big horsepower. Well, the Ford guys, they had their grabber colors. They had the grabber blues, the greens, the yellows, the oranges. They were quite loud too. And of course, with the bosses, they had all the graphics. But really, it was Mopar that took the cake. They had their high impact colors, and it took a lot of cojones to order a Panther pink car. Not only did it have the cool strobe stripe, the AARs, had the little eyebrow winglets in the front, had the fiberglass hood with the whole top of the car organosol black, had the strobe stripe going all the way to the back, but before you got there, you had the exhaust tips coming out in front of the wheels. You had 15 inch wheels and the big spoiler in the back, and of course, you had a 346 pack. Now out of the 2,724 AARs built that year, there was only 47 guys and had the balls to order this car in this color. You know, one of the coolest parts of this car is the exhaust system. Not only visually does it look cool with those trumpets exiting in front of the rear wheels, it's got a great sound and it exits right where you can really hear it. Now, what makes that cool sound is the 340 inch motor. It's got a six pack on it. It's got three Holly two barrels on aluminum Edelbrock intake. Now they painted the intake red. I don't know, they were trying to disguise it or something. Made uh, about 290 horsepower, the same as the rest of the pony cars. Same as a 69Z, same as a 69 or 70 Boss 302, but it made more torque. The 340 inch motor actually gave it a little bit more torque. Now, on the race versions, the Trans Am ones, Keith Black actually had to de-stroke those to 303 inches in order to meet homologation and go racing. That was the whole purpose for the AAR. Stood for All-American Racer, Dan Gurney built the car. They had to build 2,500 cars to meet homologation in order to fit into that Trans Am rule. One of the shortcomings of this car, and I think it hurt it not only on, on the street, but also when it ran Trans Am, is the fact that it has a torsion bar front suspension. It's basically a bar that's twisting as opposed to a spring. I don't think they ever work, and Mopar guys will always dispute this. They say it works great, but I just don't think it works as good, and it can't be as accurate for doing spring rates, ride heights, all those things that are important when you're racing a car. Now, that aside, the car's a great street car. This one's got an eight and three quarter rear end with a 391, so it gets up and goes. It's got some nice grunt, better than the rest of the cars. It really does pull nice, but with the bias ply tires, it does pull all over the road a little bit. As far as stopping goes, it's got disc brakes up front. It's acceptable, the same as all the pony cars from back then. Nothing to write home about. You've got the drums out back that usually need adjusting. Sometimes you'll lock up the rears, but that's the nature of the beast. The cool thing about these cars is their super aggressive look and their race heritage. Well, this car has had a ground up restoration and the paint is beautiful and the door gaps are great and the undercarriage is just as nice as the top. All the chrome has been done, interior has been done. But it's got the typical hood. These fiberglass hood tend to bow like this. And there's a couple of reasons for it. The way they're sprung and with the hood pins in the front and how people open them, they tend to crack even more. But what makes this car super rare is the fact that it is a factory Panther pink or the Plymouth boys called it Moulin Rouge. And I'll show you how you know for sure it is truly a Panther pink car. You can look at the buck tag over here. It's got all the option codes and you see FM3. That tells you it's a Panther pink car. You can see the second tag, which is Trans Am. That tells you it's a real AR. As well in the dash, you can see the J, which is the fifth digit, which tells you it's a 346 pack. And on the block itself, if you look down the side, you can see the TA. And again, it tells you it's a factory TA block, which was only available on the 346 packs in the AARs and the TAs. Well, all of that having been said, there are three things that make this car valuable. Number one, it's a factory AAR. It's got the 346 pack in it. Number two, it's a beautiful restoration. The car's had a ground up restoration. Top and bottom is like brand new. The car drives nicely as well. Number three, and probably most importantly, the fact that it's a factory FM3 Panther pink car. Now, how much value does that really add? Well, obviously only a handful of guys had the insight. Yeah, let's call it the insight to order a pink car. 
but that alone gives this car a premium of almost $20,000, believe it or not. If this car were not a pink car, I think the car would sell between somewhere in sixty dollars to $80,000. Because of that, I think it's an eighty dollars to $100,000 car. And every guy that calls up now wants a pink car. Imagine that.